What's up? We're gonna go over talking about, I got a projector upgrade. So why did I go with this projector? We're gonna talk about what I did to hang it, what I did to get it to fit my screen. We're gonna go from start to finish on how do we get this projector to work and why this one is such a great projector. What's going on everybody, Scott Oden coming at you. We're here, we're in the studio and we are back from the PGA show, so been exciting. We have upgrades. You can see right here, we're gonna be going through this projector. This is the BenQ LK936ST and we're gonna talk about this projector, why I have it, why I like it and uh, show you what you might wanna see from it and why you might be interested in it. Also, if you're interested in just learning about projectors, going all the way through from how I hung it, all the way through setting it up to get it on, to fit onto my screen, I have kind of an oddly shaped screen. So I think I did a pretty good job of getting it on there. So stay tuned for how we do all of that. We had a projector upgrade. Why did we do that? Well, first off, when we were at the PGA show last week, one of the big things I saw was 4K graphics are huge. We're seeing upgrades across the board of softwares. That's just something that's coming down the pipe and you really wanna to try to take advantage of it. So for me, that's uh, really cool. But also there's other reasons, you know, using this space for different uses will become very, very valuable as we are going through. So a couple of things we are looking at here. Again, this is the LK936ST. This is from BenQ. So a couple of things. One, before we even get into the projector, why I liked BenQ was what they are doing is going through and they are working in this golf simulator space. If you go to their website, they have a ton of resources on how to pick projectors. And to me, projectors can be one of the most confusing and difficult parts of this whole process. So, you know, for example, they would uh, have a section and I'll link this below, but you can go through and just kind of click through a couple of different clicks, kind of describe your, your room. Hey, I have a bright room. I need this much space, all that. And then it's gonna give you a bunch of options to look at. So. This was one of those options that came up and here is why, and this is why I like it. Okay, so first off, I am in a very bright room. You can see we have studio lights everywhere. We've got a couple of these lights right here uh, that we do. Remember, I do lessons in here, so I want the room to be very bright. I want it to not look like a dungeon when people are coming over. Um, I also, you know, when we're filming swings, you want it to be good. When we do stuff like that, uh, when we're making these videos, we want also the room to look pretty inviting and be able to see it. So what that means is you need a lot of light. So we have a very bright room. Now, what I need then is a projector that can handle that. So this projector has 5,100 lumens. Okay, so that's a lot brighter than my previous projector. I believe it was at 3,400. And so that is a big starting point as we go through it. Now, the other thing is it is 4K. Okay, so obviously that's huge. It's also a laser projector. So what is a laser projector? Well, that's different than let's say a bulb projector. Bulb projector, you're gonna have like more of a bulb look on the front. This is shooting out lasers for the light where it's gonna just maybe give you a little bit cleaner image, but also it's going to last a lot longer. So yes, this is gonna be maybe a little bit more money up front, but you're not gonna be doing bulb changes and all that. You're gonna get at least probably about five times, if not more date, uh, you know, use out of this projector than you would from like a bulb, right? So that's something you wanna look at as well as you're going through. So um, that's part of the reason as well is not having to do all that stuff. I kind of hated changing the bulbs. That's always very annoying to me. So you have that. The other thing is I wanted it to look good. You know, we're doing these videos and again, I have students trying to have them come over, have this wow factor. Hey, I'm not just in somebody's garage. We are actually out there. We're on the range. We feel like we are there. So I wanted a projector that really can do that. So when I looked at the specs of this projector, what do you have? You have Rec 709 color. Okay, so if you're familiar with cameras and editing and all that, that's just a really good color space. That's all you need to know really about that. Um, it has HDR. So HDR stands for high dynamic range. You might see that on your phone when you are doing videos or photos. Basically what that means is when you have bright parts of your image, you have dark parts of your image, it's gonna be able to keep details in those a lot better. Whereas, you know, maybe you see pictures that uh, doesn't have HDR and it's gonna look like 
uh, if you have the bright part or the black part, it's gonna just look blah, like you're gonna lose details in those parts of it. So you have what we call more range from the high part to the low part of your image. So that's, a, that's another thing that adds to just the whole experience. Hey, feeling like we're out there. And then lastly on this one, from, a, you know, from what it looks like, they do have a golf mode, which I think is interesting. And there's actually two modes I really like on this projector. I think one, because of the light I have and the amount of light, but that golf mode, what they're doing is they're really trying to bring you the uh, experience of being out there on the course. And some of the things that I know I think about, you know, I've got my pictures and stuff back here behind us. What do you notice in those pictures that I've taken? These are two pictures I've taken. I, I kind of see two colors and you can't see them all, but I see the blues and I see the greens, right? That's what they're trying to enhance when they are going through that. So that really struck a chord with me when I saw that, because when I think about some of my memories on the course from some of the prettiest courses I've played, yeah, those are the colors I remember. So I thought that was really interesting that they honed in on that with one of their projection modes. So lastly, as you're going through, this is a projector that's gonna be definitely on the higher end of the spectrum. So if you're getting a projector like that, I don't do want one that's gonna be able to do some other things. We do have a kid on the way. So my office, our family room is really close to that room uh, where the baby will be sleeping. So it's like, hey, I need to get out somewhere else to watch movies, to be able to do stuff when we are at night. So kind of transforming this space is uh, really important to me. So getting a really good image on the projector, being able to kind of feel immersed in a movie, this does have two HDMI 2.0 ports. It also has um, ARC in those HDMI ports. So if you're not familiar with what ARC is, that's basically like a pass through so you can get a sound bar, speakers, whatever, um, and the sound will go to those. And you also do have the ability, it does have a 5.1 speaker for surround sound jack. Uh, it's got a couple other jacks, I'll post that. I'm not the most technical on all that stuff when it comes to all the home theater, all that type of stuff, but it does have all that. So for me, I know where I'm gonna be watching the masters because this is in 4K, I don't have a 4K TV, so I'll be out here enjoying the beautiful sights of Augusta National in uh, all of this beautiful color and glory. But that's what I liked about this projector. That's what some of the features it has. But big thing is when we're getting this, you gotta know how to set it up. It's nice to have all the bells and whistles, but how are you gonna set this thing up as you are going through? So we'll go ahead, we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna use some of the tools that they have. But again, I would highly recommend if you're looking at a projector to start before we get into setup, Check out that BenQ site because they will take you through. Again, they don't just have this projector, um, which I really like. They do have a variety of other ones as well, but uh, make sure you check this one out. If it's worth it, works for you. I definitely think uh, when we show you the pictures and everything I've had, because I've had it for a couple days, man, it's gonna look good. But anyway, let's get into how I set it up to make this work. All right, so as we're looking at this, first off, hey, I told you about the greens and the blues. This is my picture from Harbor Shores. Uh, there you go, greens and blues, that's what we're looking for. So let's talk a little bit about how we get this guy set up. So the first thing you're gonna have to do when you are setting up your projector, okay, you have to figure out how far away you want it. So you need to have a couple of goals in mind when you are going through and you're saying, hey, I wanna set up my projector. So the first thing is when I'm setting this up, if you wanna do this the easiest way possible, is you gotta get it to where the vertical is filled, okay? So top and bottom, you wanna have the image filled. It's very easy to bring things in from the sides. It's a lot harder to go vertical. So making sure you figure out how far you need to be so you can get the top and bottom filled, that is going to be the best part of this, okay? So when we do this, okay, couple of things. We're gonna go through, I measured out the height of my screen, okay? I measured out the height. It's 91 inches. So what I'm gonna do is go to this BenQ projector calculator. So what I like is you can actually pull up, hey, this is what my projector is. So when I go over to this, let's go ahead and get a look at it. Let's see. So first things first, you're gonna go over here, you check your model projector. Here we go, I've got mine 936ST, there it is. It's gonna populate all the data that you need. And then again, all I really need is, I need to put in the height. So mine is 91 inches tall. I'm gonna type that in, okay? From there, you can mess around with some of this stuff on the side, but I didn't do that too much. Um, I'll talk a little bit about that in a sec. But you have the distance to the screen that they want. So 131 inches, 
We're gonna be doing a little bit of math in this, by the way, which I'm not good at. Uh, 91, so 12 times 10 is 120. So we're looking at about 11 feet, right? So pretty much 11 feet. So I need to be 11 feet from the screen as I go through this, okay? So right then and there, I'm gonna be able to set things up as we go, okay? Now, one thing I wanna point out with mine is, okay, so you can see I measured it off, I got measured off, and then I drilled in. So one of the things I like about this projector in, real, in particular, okay, is it has a horizontal and a vertical lens shift. So if we look at this, okay, I'm gonna get us over here. Let's take a look at what we have, right? When you're looking at this, I had to get my mounted to where it was actually a little bit off center. I needed to get a new mount for this because uh, it's just a little bit bigger than my previous projector, but that didn't matter here because we have this horizontal shift. So right here on the front of the projector, there's just a little compartment. You can actually open that up. And then there's two knobs, one that's gonna go up and down, one that's gonna go left and right. And you can do a shift. And so you can actually get this projector pretty far off to the sides and be able to still get the, the image centered on the screen. So that was another major feature to me because the other thing it is, because it has that vertical shift and has a really good one, what I could do is actually hang it higher. So my projector used to hang down right about where my hand was. I could touch it, okay? So I had it directly over the hitting area because I didn't have that shift. I had to use wall mollies to get it into the drywall and it honestly just, it wasn't as secure as I would like it. Wouldn't probably admit that, but this one is really secure into the studs, just two screws. You drill it in, screw it in, and then we hung the mount. And then it's got my Apple TV on top of there, all of that. So I definitely wanted to point that out. That's a huge feature as we go. Also, when you do the measurement, now I don't have to go back and forth and trying to figure out where that screen is. I can just do it, right? Like I can just go there, feel pretty good. Now, I'd still recommend kind of testing it out. I'll show you what that looks like, but you know, you're gonna get into a much better spot than just kind of like walking around and doing all that, right? It's not the smallest projector, we'll say that, right? But it is definitely very solid and you wouldn't wanna be carrying it around trying to juggle it as you're up and down ladders and all that stuff. You wanna know where you're going and here's what we got. So that's what we see with this as we go. Now let's get into again, just kind of going through some of the sizing as we go. All right, so here we go. You can see my screen here. Everything's looking pretty good because I've already gone through and do this, but let's talk about how I did it, all right? So first thing on this projector that's nice, you do have a couple of guides that are gonna help you. So again, you're trying to get the top and bottom filled as perfect, you know, as good as you can as you go through this. So what I used is they have this test pattern. So what you do is you are going to go in here, you go to test pattern, and there you go. What's nice is they also have a quick install button on the remote, so you can actually see as you go through, it basically gives you kind of the steps you're gonna need as you go through this. So you can see test patterns, the second one on there. So when we do that, you get this little design, okay? So again, it's just gonna give you a little look at, hey, we wanna get things top and bottom filled in. Now my projector, I do have just a touch of sag on it, so you can see it may be just a tiny touch in the corners where it's not 100%, but that's all right, we're doing, we're getting as good as we can, right? So from there, you can see, you might not be able to see this on the video, but I have over here, I've got my horizontal, right? It actually is coming all the way out to here, okay? So it's way too big wide wise, but that is okay. We'll work on that in a sec. So biggest thing is get the vertical part right. We're gonna be able to work on it horizontally from there, okay? so. Let's figure out how we're gonna do that. Once we get this part set up optically, there is an optical zoom on this. You could do a little bit with that. There is a focus ring as well. You can do that. You know, again, the more you can just kind of set it in the spot you want, I think the better off you're gonna be, but you do have some adjustment tools to work with there as you're going. So in case, hey, it might not work in a certain position, you can work with it a little bit as you're going through it. So let's get into what we're gonna do now, which is gonna be a lot more with the computer to be able to set this up. All right. Welcome to math class, okay? Welcome to math class here. So we're gonna do a little bit of work here trying to get things set up. So I have an NVIDIA graphics card, so I have a 3060 in my computer. Um, so, you know, obviously you're gonna need a graphics card that can handle 4K graphics, all that. I like the NVIDIA ones because they make it a lot easier for doing stuff like this. I'm gonna post mine because I recently just upgraded it to that. Um, and 
I found it for under $400. So I will post the one I have just in case you're looking for it. But here's what we need to do, okay? So a 4K projector, okay? We're gonna have to do just a tiny bit of math here. And I, if you, I can do this. I, dr I dropped out of high school calculus my senior year to take a second gym class because they let you nap in gym. So that's what I did. So if I can do this, you're gonna be able to do this, okay? So we're gonna do that whole like cross multiply thing. So a vertical 4K image is 2160 pixels, okay? So I'm gonna put that on the bottom here. And then on the top, we gotta figure out how wide that is. So again, we already know it's 2160 because we fit the top and the bottom, correct? So from here, we're gonna put our screen size. So for the sake of simplicity here, I'm just gonna put in mine is 10 feet wide by eight and a half feet tall. Okay, so again, vertical, horizontal is on the top, okay? Um, that's the size of my enclosure. That's not exactly the size of the screen, but that's fine, okay? My screen's actually 103 inches across, but we'll make this easy, keep it simple. You can always adjust things a little bit later. So what we need to do is do our whole math thing, okay? So we gotta do the cross multiply. So we're solving for this guy, right? So what that means is we're gonna go 10 down to 2160. We're gonna multiply those two. Okay, so I can already tell you that's 21,600, but you know what? Again, I'm not a math guy, so we'll just make sure 2160 times 10, boom, we are good. Okay, 21,600. And so then what I need to do is divide that by eight and a half. Okay, so you do the cross, then the divide. Okay, so divided by 8.5, and we're gonna get 25, we'll call it 41. Okay, 2541. So that is how many pixels a, across fit onto my screen, okay? So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go over and actually make a resolution for our computer that we do. Now, one thing I wanna note, I have not, even though my screen's more of a four by three screen, I actually haven't touched the aspect ratio. I'm still in 16 by nine on my projector, okay? So very, very important to note that that's what makes this work, okay? so. Let's get over the computer here. All right, so here we are at the computer. First thing I'm gonna do, let's turn off this test pattern real quick so you can see it. Again, you do have some things that you can do, uh, like a 3D keystone. Um, you can do that. You can also do corner fitting, and you can actually shrink the entire image as you go through. So those are things that you can mess around with at the end to just kind of fine tune it. But I think, again, as we do this, you're gonna I think you're gonna get it pretty close as you go. So what we're gonna do here is, again, I've got my NVIDIA graphics card in this computer. So I'm gonna right click on my desktop, go to show more options and go to NVIDIA control panel. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna open up the control panel for this graphics card. What we're gonna do is you're gonna see the three monitors I have connected. So you're looking for the one, we got the BenQ projector. So we're gonna click that. And what we gotta do is change, make a custom resolution so let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna to try to get this full screen for you. There we go. Um, so what you do is you go to this customize button and you can see I've already done it because I was messing around with it. You go to that, if this is all grayed out, you just click this little box, enable it, and then you go to create custom resolution. And so all you're gonna do is you go in here and you type in what you came up with. So we had 2541. We'll type that in, 60 hertz, which by the way, uh, if you are filming your swing or filming videos and you don't want that, like we call, I guess they call it the rainbow effect, you know, where it's all wavy and stuff, you just gotta match your frame rate, your shutter speed with the hertz on your computer screen or your projector screen. So I have my camera, for example, running at 120 uh, shutter speed and it's filming at 60 frames per second. So. Uh, more about the shutter speed, I think, there, but just make sure they match up or they're kind of factors of each other and you will be good. So anyway, um, let's go through this. So you could do that. Then you can click test down here. What will happen is it's going to go black, okay, just for a second, and then you can test it out. So as we are looking at this, um, you can actually see on there by doing this, this is actually a little small, and that's because of the numbers we use. You can see on the edges, there's just a tiny bit of the, the screen kind of overhanging. Um, you know, again, you can kind of mess with it as you go. It's pretty close, but I feel like it's just a little bit small. So I didn't click yes, so it just goes back to what you had. 
uh, before you do that. So what I use when I did this was I actually went with just a slightly bigger screen. So I'll go back since I've already uh, done it. I'm gonna have 25 by 60 and then that 2160 again on the bottom. So the 2160 should stay the same and then that's what we get for our resolution there. So you just create a resolution in here. That's gonna get you started as you go. So if for some reason you can't change your resolution, what I want you to do is you're gonna go over to this manage 3D set settings. So when I first tried to do this, it wouldn't let me do a custom resolution. And what it is, is this is what I found on the internet is you have to go down to this DSR factors. So I don't know why mine is off. It was off all, all the time, but it still was grayed out. So what I had to do is I had to oh, click on it. You click on this, just, just click on any one of them. I just clicked on the first one, you hit okay, okay. And then it's gonna say apply down on the bottom right. Uh, let's see, you're not gonna see that behind my head right there. So let's do that. You can see it says apply, let's do it. It's gonna go black for a second. So it goes black for a little longer than what you think, just FYI. Um, but that is something that we see. So you can see it is getting just a little bit, you know, whatever it's doing. What it's doing is I think it's scaling the image up. I think it's some sort of crop factor. So you do that, you know, you can click yes. And then what I did is just come right back in. You just come straight back into it and you just turn it off. Okay, so again, turn it off, click okay. It's back to off right there. And then I hit apply. So this is what I did. Um, and once I did that, then we were able to, then we were able to see it and uh, do that whole custom resolution thing. So again, if you aren't able to do that, that's uh, that was what was happening. Okay. So again, when I go back, just one thing too, just go back, make sure when you kind of mess around with some settings, just make sure it's where you want it to be. Cause it usually goes back to the native 4k setting. So we're going to go back in there. Cool. Make sure you accept it or otherwise it will go back and we should be good to go. Looking good up there. So from there, a couple more steps we got to do. Second step is we're going to right click on our desktop again, you're gonna to go to display settings. Uh, we're gonna go into uh, the monitor that we are using, so the projector. If you're not sure which one's your projector, click this identify, you'll see the number. So this is monitor number three, the projector is actually number two. Um, so you do that and then, um, actually let's try to do some HDR, make sure HDR is on. Okay, let's see if we can get that on. Yeah, we'll have to try that. All right, so then we come on down here. We're gonna go down to display resolution. Uh, if it's not already there, you just wanna make sure that matches the resolution you just set. You can actually see all the ones I've created. These four right here. Again, 2560 uh, with over 2160 is what we've decided on. So just make sure that's selected. And then the last step is gonna be, we are going to fire up uh, our simulation software. So in your simulation software, you just wanna make sure you select that resolution that you want to play at. So let's go ahead. I'm going to pull this over so you can see it. When you fire up GS Pro, here it is 2560, you know, in your list, they should have all of them. So 2560 over 2160, and we are doing ultra graphics as we go. So we're good to go. We're going to play. So that's how we get it set up. So it's going to work. Now let's check out how it looks because that's a big deal. All right, so here we go. We've got the 16th hole at Cypress Point Club. I thought we'd showcase one of like the most iconic holes in all of golf. So you can see this thing looks sweet, okay? And this is the amount of light we have shining on this screen right here, and you can still read it clear. Let's just show you this light. All of these lights are on this screen, right? And look at how bright that is still. And this is from exactly where you are playing from, right? The camera is on the spot, okay? So that is one of the things I wanted as we were going through to do this, all right? So getting that ability to be able to just see things still, but now let's turn off a couple of lights. Uh, Alexa, turn off Golf Studio 3. Alexa, turn off Golf Studio 4. Alexa, turn off Golf Studio 5. 
So we turned off some of those lights. We got three of them down, but again, we still have one, two, three, four, five lights on as we go. And you can see now just a lot more. Again, look at the blues, look at the details. You have white up here in the clouds. Look at that. You can see that. You got the greens and the shadows. It just looks awesome. You got the waves crashing here. This is just really, really cool. Again, one of the more iconic holes in golf, maybe the most iconic, and that's what we're looking at. So this is on what we call presentation mode, okay? That's really cool, but let's look at this golf mode as we go, okay? So that wasn't even that mode. So we go to golf mode, okay? So when I look at the golf mode, it's a little bit darker to me. That's what I see. Um, just as far as the overall brightness, but you can definitely see like the greens getting greener and like a deeper green um, in it. And then again, the blues to me look, they look good before. So I think they do a great job, but you definitely get some like a deeper color in those blues as well. So again, I think it's gonna depend on what you're kind of doing. For me with all the light, I might be going with presentation mode, but it really is cool. Again, if you got something that's more I'd say traditional simulator setup, just having like a more colorful experience, I think that's going to be really good. And so again, this is on my screen, which my screen's set up for, we're in a very tiny space, really trying to get this up where the ball's not bouncing back and then all of that stuff. So I think it looks pretty darn good as we're going through. So um, yeah, that's, uh, that's this projector. This is the LK936ST. A fantastic projector that, again, if you're really looking to upgrade your graphics and everything, this is the one. Again, I think I would go, let's go back to, uh, let's go back to this presentation mode. I was a big fan of that one. Yeah, I think just a little brighter in my space because all the light is helpful. So that's what we have there though, but a really cool experience as I'm sitting here looking at it and having it fill the whole screen and everything man, it feels like you're there. And I think that's where golf is going is trying to make this uh, environment yours and make it feel like it's really good. The investment in that saves you, makes you wanna be here, wants you to play and uh, go from there. So it's nice. So anyway, you're gonna be looking at this. Again, I'll put all the information down below, all the resources that they have, I'll have that down below. But also a really good thing from them is being able to just go through, check out what they have to offer, go through their, their questions and get the answers you need. Because again, the research you do on this is gonna really help. And then this is really gonna be something that makes a big difference, a big impact and a big pop in your setup. So if you have questions about it, please comment down below. Let me know what you need. And as always, thanks for watching. Click the subscribe button if you are not a subscriber and we will see you in future videos, all right? Thanks everybody for tuning in. See ya. Peace.